The London headquarters of the engineering group Arup and its architectural division Arup Associates. This is how architecture used to be done. Physical models of proposed buildings to give the planners and the general public a better idea of how a scheme will look and impact upon its environment. Models like these are still built here at Arup and elsewhere, but it's 3D digital visualisation which has now become the most important tool in engaging with clients, city authorities and the public. This is a fly-through showing how the finished Olympic Park will eventually look, created before much of the park was built. It's the work of a whole team here at the company's visualisation department. Heading up the team is David Edge. We created a coordinated model, visualisation model of the Olympic Park back in 2007. And using this model, it helped communicate to a number of different audiences. Uh, we published it into a real-time engine, so that helped people uh, experience what the vistas of the Olympic Park was going to be. The team's latest project is the Garden Bridge, a new proposed river crossing for London's pedestrians. Look at this video and you'd think it was built already. This is before, we can click on year one and then we can actually bring in um, what the bridge is going to look like on the first year after it's being built. And then we could go to year 25, summer, and you can start to see what the vision of uh, Heatherwick Studio and Dan Pearson Studio is with the, with the tree line reflecting the piers in, in framing the views of London. David doesn't just want to create pretty videos, he wants to put you in or on the buildings or structures before they're built. No office is complete without a shed, but this is one with a difference. It's a visualisation shed. Step into it and I can transport myself to the River Thames. Inside the shed we have a fan to represent the wind, we have leaves to represent the foliage that will be on the bridge and the aroma that they'll give. We even have the sound of birdsong and the distant hum of traffic. What we're missing are the pictures. Put on these glasses and I can really put myself on the bridge. Visualising future projects isn't just about informing the public, though. It's also about the public informing the design process. Arab Salvise Simondetti builds virtual realities of unbuilt buildings so that they can be tested before the foundations are built. This is a planned station upgrade for Hong Kong. We want a 21st century uh, station, which translates into the fact that we want to ensure that uh, passengers uh, can go from anywhere, any position, to any, any place, to any place in the station within a maximum amount of time, which is around a minute and a half. So I'm wandering around this simulation now. I must admit I'm a bit lost, and it's not surprising, given how big it is. There are four train lines, eight platforms, uh, 48 escalators. I'm tumbling down one now. And the whole point here is the signage. I'm trying to get from A to B within this station using the signs that are available to me. If I get lost or the signs don't work very well, then that information will be fed back to the developers of this simulation and the engineers and the architects can redesign the signage before the station's even built. The plan is to put this virtual reality online in the near future so the general public can feed back data in their thousands. Down by the river, David Edge is trying out his latest visualisation tool for clients using augmented reality. Technology probably won't ever be able to predict entirely how a building will function. The physical world has hidden depths after all. But there's no doubting it can dramatically improve our sense of how a building will appear and sit in its landscape before it's built. It might even lead to better buildings.